Mount Police Station has been burned to the ground and several others came under gunfire from thugs. Things quickly descended into near anarchy in the Kingston in, in the city's western belt this afternoon. Milton Walker was in West Kingston. There was intense activity in downtown Kingston this morning, which started with a massive troop and police movement. At daybreak, it appeared to be business as usual, with all major roadways clear and commercial traffic proceeding as normal. Then, an ominous sign, a large army convoy moved in from the eastern section of the city. About a dozen troop trucks, several jeeps, all full of soldiers, and a couple armored personnel carriers moved into the downtown area. At the tail of the convoy were four ambulances, a clear sign of the potential for serious casualties in any conflict. A helicopter buzzed above, the air peppered with occasional bursts of gunfire. The city had been tense for days in anticipation of a violent confrontation between the state and Tivoli Gardens. Suddenly things changed. First progressing mountain roadblocks and Spanish Town Road and Industrial Terrace. Gunfire intensified with patrols and at least four stations being attacked by gunmen. A complement of heavily armed police moved in towards the Darling Street Police Post, all the while watching every corner, nook and crevice as they advanced. Several male pedestrians were stopped and searched. Many roads had been blocked in the nearby market district, preventing full access to the Darling Street Police Post. The post is vulnerable as it sits on the border between the market and Lizard Town. It was later abandoned. Hannah Town also had to be evacuated and tugs moved in looted the station and set it on fire. The police car was driving on the Blackman Road nearby when it came under attack. Gunmen blew out the tires. The car had to be abandoned. It was later stolen with a police radio in it. In nearby Fletcher's land, a civilian was shot and injured in front of the station and rushed to hospital. Violent efforts to save him failed. He died later. A policeman was shot and received minor injuries. The Denham Town Police Station, the divisional headquarters for Kingston Western, was also attacked, but that station repelled the criminals and remains operational. Throughout the late morning and well into the afternoon, sporadic bursts of gunfire could be heard. A dumper truck and a front end loader was on standby on East Queen Street, waiting to move in to clear the blockade, but with the violence, it pretty much remained stationary. Over on the other side on Spanish Town Road, below Collismith Drive, a small roadblock was erected with old fridges and other pieces of scrap. About half an hour later, a large van was pushed onto the roadway and toppled. With no law enforcement present in that area, several tires were brought in to reinforce the roadblock. Sources say sand and dirt were dumped into the containers, further fortifying the barricade. Milton Walker, TVJ News. And gunshots rang out in downtown Kingston and the public, Kingston Public Hospital today. Nadine McLeod was in those areas. We got to Bedford Street in downtown Kingston just in time to catch vendors packing up. They weren't happy about it. The section of South Parade, and just to give you an idea of where we are, we're across the road from the entrance to Sir William Grant Park. Now, the officers can hear gunshots firing, and we can also see that Bedford Street is blocked. Get in the car, Karen, get in the car, Karen. Before we were forced to leave downtown Kingston, the police tried to clear a massive roadblock at Bedford Street, but they were fired on by thugs. Then, a scream from King Street and people started running. We stopped to find out what was happening, but couldn't get much information. We weren't about to stick around any longer. Before we ventured in the parade area, our news team was at the Kingston Public Hospital. Within moments of our arrival, gunshots. The firing continued for a while, seemingly getting closer. Moments later, more police personnel arrived. <laughs> Meanwhile, before we arrived, we heard that a policeman was a casualty of the day's events. We were told he wasn't badly hurt. His finger had been grazed by a bullet. A little over an hour later, another gunshot victim, a civilian, shot in the chest. It's understood that he was in this van when he was told to get out and shot. Meanwhile, shortly after 5 o'clock, reports reaching our newsroom were that patients at KPH and Victoria Jubilee hospitals had to take to the ground for cover as shots hit the walls. Nadine McLeod, TVJ News. And the police have instructed all law-abiding citizens in the communities of Tivoli Gardens and Denham Town to evacuate those areas as soon as possible. 
that was included in the latest press statement from the police high command this afternoon. Those who wish to leave those communities are being told to do so by way of industrial terrace towards Marcus Garvey Drive, where buses will be available to transport them to accommodation established by the Office of Disaster Preparedness and Emergency Management, ODFEM. Those persons opting to be evacuated are being asked, if possible, to bring only medication along with them, Latoya Spence reports. The police issued the release this afternoon, fueling more speculation that they are set to move into the West Kingston communities. The statement says all decent and law-abiding citizens living in Tivoli Gardens and Denham Town should leave the areas immediately. The police say buses will be provided to escort all persons wishing to leave to a secure and undisclosed location. The police say these residents can access the buses at the intersection of Industrial Terrace and Marcus Garvey Drive. Meanwhile, in a Another release, the police also said the attacks being made against their personnel are continuous and unabated. The police say the attacks against them were unprovoked and coincide with their efforts to lawfully serve the public. The police went on to say that credible intelligence has also led them to believe that scores of criminals from several gangs across the island have joined those in Tivoli to launch further attacks against the security forces. They say it is clear that the criminals are determined to launch several coordinated attacks against the security forces. Latoya Spence, TVJ News. Now, Prime Minister Bruce Golding is, as we said, expected to give details about the state of emergency at 8.30 this evening. That will be broadcast live on Television Jamaica and we will be, and of course, after that, we will have a discussion program with Milton Walker and Kerry Ann Lee. But the Security Minister Dwight Nelson has been shedding light on the circumstances which led to the government's decision. I must express my own disgust at the blatant attacks on the symbols of law and order in the country, the police stations and other entities that represent law and order. Um, a, state of, a limited state of emergency has been declared to give the police extraordinary powers to deal with the situation which exists, to deal with movements in the areas defined by the state of emergency, to ensure that adequate protection of life and property is imposed, uh, is extended to the citizens, to ensure that the rights of the citizens, which are now um, being threatened, are protected. Mr. Nelson went on to say that it appeared these were clear and coordinated attacks against members of the security forces. I have heard of one police officer being injured. I know the police have been coming under tremendous attack at a number of police posts. Um, we have moved um, police personnel and members of staff out of those areas where they're where they are under attack to alternate places of safety. Um, but it is a fact that police, a number of stations have come under attack. We are putting into, in place provisions to protect our officers as we speak. He added that the attacks were mainly centered on police stations located in downtown Kingston. That is what it appears to be. As I say, I, you know, I abhor, I detest, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm angry at these blatant attacks 